Do y'all remember when trucks were trucks? I mean, real trucks. They were actually built to work, to be a trusty old horse that you could get her done with by towing and hauling stuff and not have to worry about damaging it, which is so unlike the fancy snowflake trucks that we have today with their 22 inch wheels, infotainment gadgets, and interiors that look like they belong in a Mercedes S Class. I mean, the people that buy those luxury rollers with truck beds clearly aren't as macho as whoever buys this thing. And that's including myself since I have a 2017 Sierra Denali. But I'm not very macho. I mean, look at me. Anyway, you can buy this Thor's hammer of a truck, a 2002 Dodge Ram 2500 with 210,000 miles right now at Euro Asian Auto Inc. in Wichita, Kansas for only $89.95. And for that, you get your own unbreakable, stupid simple machine and really the kind of truck that you simply cannot buy anymore. Now, a lot of people are looking at me, then looking at the truck, then looking at me, and then looking at the truck and then thinking, you idiot, these trucks weren't invincible. My uncle's truck rusted away, the paint fell off, the dash caved in, and the doors fell off, and the electronics went nutty, and, and yeah, you're kind of right. The truck itself isn't all that great, but the reason you see so many of these in absolutely horrible condition still on the road is because of the almost unbreakable engine. Check out this engine. And if you're wanting to read more about my thoughts on these old diesel trucks, you can click the link below, autotrader.com slash overseer. You can also shop for one there. Now, it's really easy to make an argument that the 5.9 Cummins diesel was the best engine of the era, as Dodge was totally brilliant to source this engine from Cummins, a company that's dominated the heavy industry and truck market with their diesel engines forever. But it wasn't until 1989 when Dodge was the first company to source Cummins engines for their light duty trucks. And this really is a stoutly built motor. It has timing gears, giant gears, rather than a timing chain or belt. But I also suspect this engine lives forever because it's really powerful and doesn't have to work as hard to pull a heavy load. It seems like Dodge wanted to hang onto this old diesel for as long as they could, but thanks to new stricter emission standards and evolving technology from the competition, this 5.9 diesel was discontinued in 2007 and a new variable turbo fancy schmancy 6.7 liter took its place, which doesn't seem to be nearly as stout as these old Cummins. But one thing that Dodge still offers with their diesel trucks that Ford and Chevy does not is a manual transmission option. So kudos to them for still doing that. And this Ram right here has the handshaker. Manual transmission is the best part of this thing. Just a little bit of torque. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man, this manual transmission works so well with this motor. So nice and basic. The whole interior is basic too. Look at this thing. I have vinyl floors, no carpet, vinyl seats, manual transmission of course, and manual windows, but I still have some luxury options like air conditioning. I have a radio, although it's cassette only. Cruise control, really all you need. 3,500 RPM redline. That's it. You are shifting a lot. And first and second is definitely a crawler gear. All your power's in third. But man, is there power. Clearly, there's plenty of power, more than you'll ever need in a pickup truck this size. But they can be even more powerful. These engines are super tunable. That's why you see so many with giant smokestacks just blowing big black smoke because people turn up the fuel on these things do other things to tune them, and then they are properly quick. This one's bone stock, but still, God, you put it in third. Torque just pulls. God, this thing's great to hear that grumble, the rawness of this engine. The new diesels are just so refined and quiet. They're, they're, just, they're just like gasoline motors, and they have all the gasoline problems with it. But this engine isn't perfect. I know there's that little dowel pin that likes to kind of fall out, vibrates its way out and gets into the cam gears and blows up the engine. But really that's one potential fatal flaw as opposed to a half dozen with other engines. Clearly it doesn't affect all of them as it's really common to see one of these with four or 500,000 miles on it. Just no problem. But I totally understand why Walker Texas Ranger drove a Dodge pickup. Not a diesel, but you know, Chuck Norris drives a Dodge probably think about driving a Dodge. After driving this, I totally understand why people are hanging on to these old trucks while the body literally falls apart. 
as it's so nice to have a truck that feels this simple, this raw, have a mechanical feeling, just so connected that you can't get anymore. Now, buying a new truck is a really expensive proposition nowadays, so it makes sense to have some luxury features thrown in. And since emission standards and other mandates would make it impossible for manufacturers to offer a simple diesel engine like this old 5.9 Cummins, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. So, it makes sense that these simple old trucks have such a high resale value as well, because you really can't buy this anymore. I certainly want one now, but you know, I want everything. Thank you for watching. This is kind of an awkward swinging pose here. Trucks while the bodies literally fall apart. It is, I'm walking and talking, walking and talking and sitting and opening a truck bed and walking and talking. God dang it. To drive a truck that's so simple with this raw mechanical feeling. Okay, walking and talking, walking and talking and opening a truck bed while I'm walking and talking. That's great. And it's all sweaty here. Okay, let's try this again. Come on. After driving this, I totally understand. I, need, I needed to do it a little quicker because, okay, come on, walking and talking, walking and talking.